in the last stream, we were working on finally getting our hands on the Angel Ring, giving us creative mode flight, so we no longer have to rely on having a jetpack, recharging that jetpack, using up our chest slot for a jetpack. Instead, we can now fly around as freely as we could in creative mode Minecraft. We also began working on what I called the beginning of the end with the quantum compressor here. And if last stream was the beginning of the end, this stream is very much uh, the middle of the end because hopefully what we're going to work on in today's stream is gathering all of the remaining items that we currently don't have that we would need in order to make the creative vending upgrade. So hopefully when we come back for the next stream, we will be able to make the creative vending upgrade. But to get there, we do need to make 24 of these ultimate singularities. And if we're going to make 24 ultimate singularities, we need 24 of each of the component singularities. And to do that, we need to get a few more bees because there are a couple of resources uh, to which we're not currently making. And if we're going to make 24 of each singularity, that means that we need to have at the very least 240,000 of each of these items. Those being uranium, tin, steel, silver, redstone, nickel, lead, lapis, iron, glowstone, emerald, electrum, diamond, copper, coal, bronze, and aluminum. And up here in the top right, aluminum, electrum, nickel, silver, and bronze are the only ones that we currently do not have bees for. So we are going to look at setting up bees for these. We're also going to do a little bit of work on both immersive engineering and Batania today, because those are really the only mods that are going to stand in the way of us completing some of the final late game quests. Uh, those being things like the everlasting guilty pool and also the infinite storage disc down here, which does require some biodiesel, which you do have to make via a refinery from immersive engineering. Now, on the subject of the infinite storage disk, initially, I was hoping that we could make this before we got the creative vending upgrade. I was hoping we could set up a bunch of automation, set that automation going, and craft the infinite storage part. However, between streams, um, I did some number crunching, and the sheer number of items and the sheer number of crafts required to make this infinite storage part is so incredibly high that it just makes no sense whatsoever to try and do this before we get the creative vending upgrade. Once we have the creative vending upgrade, we can have infinite 1K storage parts and therefore craft them into infinite 4K storage parts and so on and so forth. Um, if we were to try and do this without the creative vending upgrade, uh, we would need millions of improved processes. We would need millions of redstone, millions of quartz in which iron, and it's just insane. The recipe is so vast. The fact that each components so each one of these 1048m storage components requires three of the lower tier and then three of those lower tiers and then three of the lower tier and 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 then that's the 1k storage part you need so much and it would take so long that i don't think it's feasible for us to do this before we get the creative vending upgrade so unfortunately what we can do today is look at making the advanced storage housing, and then in the next stream, once we have the creative vending upgrade, then we can look at making the infinite storage part to give us infinite storage for our refined storage system. Um, and so that is something we are going to work on today, and I'll actually go ahead and bookmark the advanced storage part here real quick. And yeah, the other thing that we're going to work on is Batania. Um, I would like to get the terrestrial agglomeration plate. That's going to allow us to make Terra Steel, and by extension, it's also going to allow us to make a portal to the Alfheim, which will allow us to get things like Elementium, to make the full set of Elementium armor and the Terra Steel armor, and it will also allow us to fight the Gaia, one of the things that we're going to have to do if we're going to get this everlasting Guilty Pool, uh, because the recipe here does require five of these Gaia Spirits, which are made from regular Gaia Spirits, which you get from fighting the Gaia, which, for those who don't know, is kind of a final... Uh, late game boss from Batania. So the very first thing that I think we should do is we need to get more mana. And what I've done between streams is I've added a few more endo flames here to hopefully speed up the rate at which we're going to get mana. And just to set this ball rolling, I think what I would like to do is I would like to make a mana splitter, which is made with uh, six living rock and two mana steel. It would appear that we are fully out of a living rock that is fine because we should still have uh, some pure daisies in our system we do let's go ahead and get those down once again and surround those with regular stone here uh, basically what the splitter is going to allow us to do is 
increase the, the amount of mana that we can hold because right now we have one mana spreader shooting mana at one mana pool if we put down a mana splitter what we can do is we can have the mana spreader shoot the mana that we're generating at the mana splitter and then that mana splitter will distribute the mana to four adjacent mana pools and so we essentially quint uh, quadruple the amount of mana that we can store and so my plan hopefully is to get the mana splitter down with three more mana pools load up the hopper here with coal and i think we might go as far as to make blocks of coal here uh, because they do burn for longer and of course we can store even more of them in the hopper and so hopefully when we come back later on in today's stream after we've done some work on the bees and maybe after we've done some work on immersive engineering uh, we can come back and we will hopefully have enough mana to make the terrestrial agglomeration player and to make some terra steel uh, setting us up nicely for the next stream now one thing actually i might take a quick detour here as well because you'll notice that the mecha tool here despite being a very expensive late game tool is actually not very fast at mining any block and the reason for that is that there is actually an upgrade that you can put into the mecha tool to make it mine faster and that is one of these this guy right here the excavation escalation unit increases digging speed on any block so this is actually one of the cheaper units for us to make it does require some infused alloys which apparently we are missing i'll go ahead and request a bunch of those but uh, essentially i think if we were to put four of these excavation escalation units into our mecha tool uh, that would drastically increase the speed at which we're able to mine so let's go see about installing these if we do something like this and like this those are going to slowly but surely make their way into the mecha tool and then from there we can once again look at uh, configuring this if i'm not mistaken i set it to numpad one i did indeed so is there an option to boost the speed there is so right now we're at efficiency 16 we can bring that all the way up to efficiency 128 which might be a little too good but let's find out how fast is this yeah that's definitely much faster now and of course we can just we've got to be careful <laughs> because i'm holding down uh, the ftb ultimine key but uh if it mines too quickly it's quite possible that i'm holding down the key when i break the grass like you know what i mean if i'm putting down i'm trying to break a block i go i don't let go of the key fast enough it breaks the grass we lose our whole platform and so just to be safe i think i might bring this down uh, maybe back to like 16 that's probably more than fast enough yeah even still it's maybe still a little bit fast so let's get one more batch of stone going there and then over here let's grab some iron that's going to allow us to make the mana steel from there we should be able to make the mana splitter like so and hopefully we have what it takes to make three more mana pools we are just three living rock shot hopefully that'll be done momentarily and if we do something like this with a mana pool here and here we should then be able to shift right click on the mana spreader shift right click on the mana splitter and now the mana spreader is sending its mana to the mana splitter and distributing that mana amongst all of the mana pools i'm a fool uh, thank you chat they have pointed out that i did adjust my attack damage not my excavation speed let me bring that down to uh 32 also you may notice now that our mana spreader is constantly full of mana and in fact if we look at some of our endo flames here you'll see that they're actually full of mana that they can't get rid of because the current mana spreader that we have can't send the mana fast enough to keep up with the endo flames that are generating the mana and sending it to the mana spreader one thing we can do here is we can look at getting lenses batania adds a couple of different lenses and they all have different effects the ones that we would be interested in are the velocity and the potency lenses these two right here increase the speed and the amount of mana that is sent so that the velocity mana increases the speed at which mana is sent and the potency mana increases how much mana is sent uh, per burst right because if we watch uh, they'll see they are sent in little bursts of mana and thankfully batania does also have the ability of combining lenses together to get kind of the best of both worlds so if we were to go ahead and look at crafting these up they're both made with a mana lens which is four mana steel and a glass pane or a block of glass we also need a specific rune for each one of these we need a rune of air for the velocity lens and a rune of fire for the potency lens uh, both of those of course are made using 
the Runic Ulta, and the good news is that both of these are made in sets of two, so we're going to get two runes of air and two runes of fire, and if we are going to make that terrestrial agglomeration plate later on in today's stream, this guy also requires a rune of air and a rune of fire. I'll go ahead and bookmark that. Um, and so neither of these are really going to go to waste. We are going to use the extra rune later on today. So let's have a quick look here. The rune of fire is one mana steel, one mana powder, nether wart, gunpowder, and nether brick. So I don't know if we have any mana steel or mana powder. We do not. Thankfully, you can make mana steel and mana powder fairly easily using iron and gunpowder. So mana steel, mana powder, nether warts, nether brick, and gunpowder. Of course, we are going to need a living rock to complete this ritual once it's done. While we wait for that, uh, for the velocity rune, we need the rune of air. That is, again, mana steel and mana powder, but this time we need a carpet, a feather, and a string. So feather-wise, we actually don't have a feather. String, we do have but one, and in fact, we should have a lot more string uh, down in our mole spawning crate, should we need more. And carpet-wise, we should be able to make some carpet using some wool, which we do have. Beautiful. Uh, is this done? It is indeed. So we'll drop the living rock and right-click with the wand of the forest. That gets us the rune of fire. Then let's get the mana steel, string, mana powder, white carpet, and what else did we need here? Just the feather. Okay. So for a feather, we're going to have to use, I think, some of our eggs. Thankfully, we do have a lot of eggs now. And it's becoming apparent that I probably should have put a storage drawer here, actually, instead of just a uh, a chest. But either way, we can uh, throw these. So unfortunately, you can't get feathers from baby chickens. However, it's quite possible that we could feed at least one of these chickens enough seeds to where they become an adult fairly quickly. And then from there, we could potentially look at, uh, at using that adult as a way of getting those seeds. And in fact, I'll feed uh, two chickens up here just in case the first one doesn't give us the uh, the feather that we're after. I think we should also probably use the mob imprisonment tool here. Uh, that way we can move the fully grown chickens away from the baby chickens and uh, and therefore not accidentally hit these guys when, uh, when we try and get our feather. So there's chicken number one. We're just going to carefully take him over behind this uh, end shelf so the other chickens don't see. And then we'll do one of these. And thankfully, we got two feathers right out of the gate, which is perfect. So let's drop those down over here. We can pop the other one into the uh, the system for now. Let's also go ahead and grab those. Good stuff. Uh, let's quickly craft up that uh, fourth mana pool whilst we're here. We'll drop that down right about there. And then as soon as this is done, we should be able to make both a mana lens of potency and a mana lens of velocity. I think the only thing we would be missing is some mana steel one two three four five six seven and eight beautiful so two mana lenses one and two one of potency and one of velocity and then if i'm not mistaken what we can then do is we can craft them together with a slime ball and that will give us a composite mana lens of both potency and velocity which we can then put onto our mana spreader by right clicking like so and now if we give this a right click we should see it sending mana faster specifically if we come and look over here we should see that there are no endo flames that are backing up on mana anymore because all of their mana is being sent to the mana spreader and as you can see the mana spreader itself is also not backing up on mana because it's sending all of that mana over to the mana splitter that is then distributing that mana amongst all of the mana pools Nice. So we'll go ahead and we'll fill up the hopper here with as many blocks of coal as we can. And hopefully, later on in today's stream, when we come back, there should be uh, enough mana in these mana pools here to get both the terrestrial agglomeration plate and at least one piece of terra steel, preferably two, uh, because we want to have one to make the alpine portal, and then we would want to have a second one so that in the next stream we can uh, get infinite once we have the creative vending upgrade. For now, though, let's head on back over here and let's take a look at the bees that we are missing. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we can unbookmark this and this. The five resources that we're currently missing are bronze, silver, nickel, electrum, and aluminum. 
So those bees we are going to have to generate. I do, once again, think that we are at the point where we could make our fourth and presumably final tier 4 apiary. Now, what I think I should do here is I think we should craft each of the apiary tiers one at a time, because over here there is a quest to get a tier 2, a tier 3, and a tier 4 apiary. Up until now, we've kind of just jumped straight from tier 1 to tier 4. So I think what we should do is we should go ahead and request a tier 2 apiary, start and start. That hopefully shouldn't take too long. Once that's done, we'll take it out of the system to complete the quest. We'll put it back in the system, and we will request a tier 3 apiary, start and start. Again, hopefully not going to take too, too long. Good stuff. And then from there, again, complete the quest and request a tier 4 apiary, start and start. And at that point, we can go ahead and replace this apiary right here, and we can begin to fill this up with some of the bees that we're currently missing. Now, I think I might also look at maybe retiring some of the other bees that we don't necessarily need. For example, uh, right now we have 2.4 million redstone, and we only need uh, 240,000 redstone uh, to get the singularities. And in fact, we don't even need that because we've already made the 24 redstone singularities in the last stream. And so I think what we might do is for things like the redstone bee, the diamond bee, the uranium bee, and the tin and glowstone bees, and maybe even like the iron bee, I think I might take those out of their current apiaries and replace them with copies of the bronze, silver, nickel, electrum, and aluminum bees, right? Uh, what I mean by that is we might have, for example, four bronze bees, one in each apiary, essentially to quintuple the speed at which we, oh, sorry, I keep saying quintuple instead of quad, uh, quadruple, to essentially quadruple the speed at which we're generating things like bronze, silver, nickel, electrum, and aluminum, because I'm hoping that by this time tomorrow, when I stream again, we will have 240,000 of each of these items. And I think just having one B in one tier four apiary wouldn't quite get us that amount that quickly. So I'm thinking about making at least four of each of these Bs and putting them into each and every apiary to really speed up the rate at which we get these resources. So let's have a look then. The bronze bee, I believe, is a cross between the tin bee and the copper bee. It is indeed. Both of which we should have over in our uh, drawers over here. Um, I think it's quite possible that we also have some of these bees already. For example, I think both the silver and the nickel bee are made with sieve bees and gravel bees. So sieve and gravel for silver, and then nickel is... Yeah, also seven gravel, which we have done a few times. So it's possible uh, that we might have some silver or some nickel lying around in here already. So a quick check through those crates. And we do have an aluminum bee, a nickel bee, and a silver bee already. Uh, we also have a tin bee and a copper bee. So over here, uh, let's take any bees that are in here out. Thankfully, there are none. Uh, put in tin and copper. I'm going to assume those both take uh, tin and copper respectively. They do. Uh, thankfully, we do have... 378,000 copper, as well as 563,000 tin. Uh, so I'll throw in both the copper and the tin, and that should begin generating bronze bees. Um, of course, it is uh, just as soon as we put some jars in there. Now, of course, we do want more than one bronze bee here, so we probably do want to leave this running for a little while, because as I said a moment ago, we want at least four bronze bees, uh, one for each apiary. If we really wanted to uh, maximize the rate at which we're generating bronze, we could put two bronze bees in each apiary for a total of eight bronze bees. Uh, that would make sure that uh, whenever a bronze bee is in the apiary, the other bronze bee is pollinating. And then when the bronze bee comes out of the apiary, the one that's pollinating goes in and they're always cycling as fast as they possibly can. So it's quite possible we want to have eight of those. Uh, the same is also true, of course, for the aluminum, nickel and silver bees as well. Um, and of course, the electron bee, which by the way is uh, a cross between gold and silver. So let's grab some more bee jars. And like I said, I think I will go ahead and grab one of these gold bees here. Chat is recommending that I get a couple more apiary breeders, which I think is probably a good idea here. They're not too difficult for us to make. And we can put, of course, up to one in each of the other apiaries to speed up the, sp uh, the rate of which we're breeding our bees here. So one, two, and three. Beautiful. Uh, we'll put those in. Um, I guess in the exact same place we've been putting them in the other apiaries, right? We'll put one here, one here, and one here. Uh, that does remind me we do have the new tier four apiary. So uh, over in here, this is 
pretty much empty. Let's see about replacing that. Boom. And from there, we should now be able to start using all of these for breeding. So let's take a gold bee and a silver bee. Let's also grab some gold and some silver. We actually don't have any silver, really. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. We've not run a silver bee yet. Um, I will go ahead and quickly smelt up some uh, silver ore here just to get the silver ingots to make the electrum bees. Thankfully, we do have this uh, ultimate smelting factory making things nice and fast. Uh, but then over here, we can do silver and gold along with some empty bee jars there. Beautiful. And I think that's basically it, right? Um, it might not be a terrible idea for us to also grab a sieve bee and a gravel bee just so we can see about getting more nickel bees, silver bees, and aluminum bees. Because again, ideally we want to have about eight of each of those for maximum resource generation. All right, so quite a while later, and I believe we are now good to go. So now every single one of our four apiaries should have electrum, silver, nickel, aluminum, and bronze bees. Some of them have, most of them, I should say, have two of each bee. Some of them only have one of each bee if we didn't have enough bees. But there should be those five bees in every single apiary all producing resources. So all we have to do now is unclog the system because, of course, now that we've added uh, those five new resources, uh, we need to add new storage drawers to match. Uh, what I have gone ahead and done between streams to kind of free up space is I have gone ahead and consolidated some of our storage drawers into smaller drawers. So previously we had uh, almost exclusively these kind of single drawers that only hold one item. Whereas now down here, we have three drawers that are two by two drawers and these can hold four of any given item. Usually by default, uh, these can still hold 2048 items like these can if you don't upgrade them. Uh, but now of course that we have the creative storage upgrades, uh, these can essentially hold infinite amounts of four items as opposed to infinite amounts of one item, making them almost strictly better and freeing up more space. And you'll also notice I've added some more compacting drawers here for things like silver. And you'll also notice there's some other stuff in here that's not supposed to be here. Uh, things like the brick, the bone meal. I need to be locking these as I empty them out because they these should be empty. I'm not quite sure what we're going to put in here, but uh, we definitely shouldn't be using one draw just to hold the uh, the linking tool. That seems a bit uh, a bit wasteful. Uh, down here we have aluminum. Let's take you out. Aluminum wants to go and nickel. They both want to go into their new compacting drawers. So we'll do aluminum in here. We'll do nickel down here. Uh, we are also going to need one for electrum. And we're going to need one for bronze, which we already have. Okay, cool. So I think that should be almost everything. Let me go and grab some electrum. We'll drop that in. I guess right now here, I don't think we're going to do blocks of Electrum, so we don't necessarily need it in a compacting drawer. I think we just need it in ingot form for the most part. So this should be fine. Uh, again, these do already have creative storage upgrades. These three here are missing creative storage upgrades. Unfortunately, I don't think you can take a creative storage upgrade out. Once it's in, you can't remove it. So like these drawers here are just forever going to be creative storage drawers, but they can't hold anything. And so in fact, I might even go as far as to like swap this out. Again, like nickel wise, I don't think we need nickel blocks or nickel nuggets. So I might put the nickel in here just to save having to make even more creative storage upgrades. Okay, so now all of these ingots are in drawers that have creative storage upgrades. And so uh, hopefully by the time we come back for tomorrow's stream, we should have over, or hopefully we'll have over 240,000 of each of those items. Uh, so we can start to look at producing singularities for all of them and of course singularities for everything that we need in order to make the ultimate singularity so chat now that that is taken care of uh, let's do a quick detour back over here how are we doing on mana we're doing pretty well and in fact i think we do have more than enough mana here to make some terror steel which i think is probably going to be worth it so as i mentioned earlier if we're going to make the terrestrial agglomeration plate uh, which is the plate required to make terra steel. Uh, we're going to need a block of mana steel, which we can get with some iron here. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine of those. And then we'll quickly craft up a block. 
And then the only other things we need now are the Rune of Water, the Rune of Earth, and the Rune of Mana. None of which I don't think should be too difficult. So do we have three Living Rock? We do not. Uh, that is fine. We can quickly grab some stone from this draw down here. We'll put some in the system. But then, of course, we'll keep a little bit to put around the pure daisies. And while we wait for those, we can look at getting all of the items for the runes that we need. Um, I think the Rune of Mana is fairly easy, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure it's almost exclusively Mana Steel. It is. It's five Mana Steel with one Mana Pearl. A Mana Pearl just being an Ender Pearl in the Mana Pool. So let's go ahead and grab, um, I guess, seven iron here because i know each of the other runes uh, requires one mana steel so five for the rune of mana and two uh, one each for the other two runes so seven in total uh, let's do you and then one two three four five and mana pull beautiful while we wait for that we're also going to need a to turn down the sound of chickens right down there we go uh, we're also going to need to get a fishing rod a sugar cane and a bone meal, um, as well as some more mana powder. Let's just grab some redstone to make that. Beautiful. That should be enough. Uh, so fishing rod, we of course do not have, but should be able to make very easily. Um, of course, we are still out of string, but as I mentioned right at the start of the stream, we should have string down here. We do. we got a bunch of the stuff. Uh, let's put all of that back into the system to make a fishing rod. A uh, bone meal, we should have. And a sugar cane, we should also have. We do. Good stuff. Uh, let's head on back over here. We should be good to go on the mana rune. Living rock, right click. And then we'll do mana steel along with bone meal, fishing rod, sugar cane, mana powder, mana steel. While we wait for that, the final one here is the rune of earth, which requires a stone, a block of coal, and a mushroom. So mushroom... We made a bunch of these earlier in the series. Uh, stone, we just grabbed. And coal, we also have in abundance. In fact, we already have a block of coal on us. Once again, boom and boom. At this point, we are going to have to grab the mecha tool. Uh, by the way, the rune of mana there is the only one that's not made in a set. That's what I was worried about <laughs> earlier on in the playthrough. Thankfully, uh, we do have more dirt and we should be able to replace that uh, fairly easily here. Uh, before I do that, let me quickly uh, get that rune of earth going. So a block of coal, stone, mushroom, mana steel, mana powder. Yeah, whoops. And again, boom and boom. And that chat should be all of the runes that we need to make the terrestrial agglomeration plate. From there... We need four blocks of lapis and I believe five blocks of living rock. It might be the other way around, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, four and five. Uh, do we have a Lexica Batania? We do not. Uh, let's have a look here. Lexica Batania. We might as well go ahead and throw one together. This is basically the uh, guidebook for Batania. And then if we go ahead and type in Terra Steel, we need to set up this multi-block here, which is five living rock and four lapis. We'll do a three by three hole, being careful not to break too much. We'll then do one, two, three, and four with one, two, three, four lapis, living rock in the middle, and then the terrestrial agglomeration plate on top. Now, unlike with the runic altar where we can use the mana spreader to send mana from the mana pool to the runic altar, um, unfortunately, you can't shoot mana at the terrestrial agglomeration plate. Uh, to get mana to the terrestrial agglomeration plate, uh, we actually have to use sparks, these guys right here. Thankfully, they are fairly easy for us to make. Just two petals, two blaze powder, and a gold nugget. And then we can right-click one on the terrestrial agglomeration plate, like so. We can right-click another onto one of our mana pools. We might as well go with the one that is the fullest, like so. And then now, if we want to make terror steel, all we have to do is drop one mana diamond, one mana steel, and one mana pearl onto the terrestrial agglomeration plate. That will then use, I think, about half a mana pool's worth of mana. It shows a full mana pool here, but again, I never really trust the uh, info in JEI. Uh, we'll find out in a second because this mana pool here is full. Uh, so let's grab an iron ingot to make the mana steel. 
we'll grab an ender pearl to make the mana diamond. We will grab uh, the mana pearl. We'll grab a diamond to make the mana diamond. One, two, and three. Drop all three of those on here. So one, two, and three. And that should begin creating Terra Steel. And there we go. One Terra Steel ingot. Nice. And just to confirm, yeah, it used about half a mana pool's worth of mana. That little extra bit there was probably us making uh, the Terra Steel, the mana pearl, and the mana diamond. Uh, so now that we have this, what we can do, uh, I'm not quite sure what's happened with the images here. They seem to be a bit broken. But uh, if we move those out of the way, what we can do is we can look at making the Alphine portal. So to make this, we need two mana pools. We need an Elven Gateway Core, eight Living Wood, three Glimmering Living Wood, and two Natura Pylons. So Living Wood-wise, we do have 10. I am going to put down a few more Oak Logs, just in case 10 isn't enough, although I think it probably is. And of course, my mistake earlier was that I uh, actually lost the Pure Daisies when I Vin mined the, uh, the platform. So that is less than ideal. I'm going to hope in that case that 10 is enough. If it's not, we can always make another Pure Daisy. We might have to make another Pure Daisy anyway. Uh, but for now, let's have a look. We'll take the Living Wood. We needed three Glimmering Living Wood, which is made with Living Wood and Glowstone. One, two, and three. We also need two Natura Pylons. These are made with regular Mana Pylons, which are made with Mana Steel and mana diamonds. So once again, we'll grab some iron and some diamonds for that. I'll make a few more here just so we don't have to keep making these individually. Uh, let's make 16 and 16. Beautiful. And uh, we'll then see about making two mana pylons, one and two. And then to upgrade those, we do need uh, Terra Steel Nuggets. So let's craft our one Terra Steel and get down into Nuggets, craft up two of those. The last thing that we need is the Elven Gateway Core which again requires three nuggets. This time it does require six living wood, which is basically all of the living wood uh, that we had left. And although that has completed the quest for us, um, I'm pretty sure we are gonna, craft, uh, gonna have to craft up another pure daisy here because in order to actually make the portal, we do need some more living wood. Thankfully, it's just white petals. So if we grab our pouch, I'm hoping we have some mystical white petals in here. Uh, white flowers even. We do. Beautiful. Uh, let's go ahead and craft those down. Drop those in over in the petal apothecary with a little bit of water and a seed. One, two, three, four, and seed. Beautiful. So a little bit more living wood later. Uh, I will also put a few more torches down here, chat, because I'm going to assume that, uh, yeah, we got uh, space for mobs to spawn now, which is less than ideal. Uh, let's see if we can't get the portal down so i think what i might do here actually is probably move this crystal i think i'll also move the runic altar because i'm thinking of putting the portal kind of like right here so this portal has the elven gateway core in the center like so it then has i believe living wood here and here uh, let me check real quick that it's not living wood planks i don't think it is but just to be on the safe side yeah, I'm pretty sure that that is regular mana wood, living wood. If I'm not mistaken, we then have more living wood here and here with glimmering living wood here and here, regular living wood here and here. And then these bricks are just to give me a place to put the wood on, something like that. I believe that's the correct orientation for the, the altar here. And then all we should have to do now is put down two mana pools within a certain area. I think it might be an 11 by 11 area around the portal. Uh, we will put ours here and here. And then from there, we can put on the nature of pylons here and here. Although what I might actually do just to make life a little easier is I might grab the mana tablet that we made previously because we do need to get mana into these pools, and I think it's going to be easier to move the mana using these mana tablets. And I think we want both of these to be at least um, a quarter of the way full. I think preferably maybe closer to uh, halfway full, but I think a quarter should get us there. It doesn't require that much mana, I don't think, to open the, uh, open the portal. 
Once we have a decent amount of mana in each pool here, I think we can just right click the core and that should create a working portal if you have enough. Although it looks like maybe I don't quite have enough here. I'm a fool, chat. I don't have the mana pylons down. Thank you for, uh, for pointing that out. You are indeed correct. That's why that didn't work. I didn't put them down because it's easier to put the tablets in when they're not down. But uh, in order to actually open the portal, I do have to have the pylons on top of the mana pools. That is my bad. Let me uh, get this one down properly. Let's try that again. Right click. And there we go. You can see it didn't really use that much mana. Definitely less than a quarter of a mana pool, but it's now open. Uh, the mana pool doesn't use any mana when it's open. So like right now, it's not actively using mana. Um, it only ever uses mana when you try and craft something with it. For example, um, if we wanted to complete uh, some of these quests down here, uh, Elementium can be made by throwing two mana steel into the portal. So if we were to, for example, get ourselves 48... iron we could then try and craft that into 48 mana steel assuming we have enough mana for that which it looks like we do and then from there we could take that 48 mana steel throw that through the portal that should give us 24 elementium again we will be losing mana here whilst making elementium but i think it doesn't use that much so we should be good to go there and then once we have the 24 elementium we could then make an elementium chest plate uh, we could make an elementium helmet, some elementium leggings, and some elementium boots. And there we go. That's that quest line complete. Not that we need the armor, of course, because we do have our mecha suit armor, uh, but we will complete these quests just for the sake of completing them. And uh, we do need the elementium specifically for the Gaia pylon. So next time we'll come back and we'll look at getting a bit more elementium, as well as some pixie dust, which you make by throwing mana pearls into the, uh, the oven portal. Uh, that will allow us to get the Gaia pylons, which will then allow us to fight the Gaia and get the Gaia Spirits required to make the Everlasting Guilty Pool. Now, the last thing that I want to work on in today's stream is getting the fluid required to make the infinite storage disk, uh, that being this fluid right here, the biodiesel. So to make the biodiesel, we need to make a refinery, which is a big multi-block structure from immersive engineering. And do we have the immersive engineering manual? We do indeed. So if we look in here, we look at heavy machinery. Here is the refinery, and this is what it looks like when it's done. And if we press play here, we should hopefully be able to get to uh, see what it looks like before it's formed. So essentially a multi-block structure made up of steel scaffolding, light engineering blocks, heavy engineering blocks, iron sheet metal, redstone engineering blocks, and fluid pipes. So this guy is gonna be used to combine plant oil with ethanol to make biodiesel. The plant oil we can make in an industrial squeezer. This will take seeds. We can use regular seeds. We can use pumpkin seeds, any kind of seed that we like, uh, and that will make plant oil. We also need the ethanol, which is made in an industrial squeezer. This will take things like potatoes, melon slices, apples, and sugarcane. To produce that ethanol, we can then take the ethanol and the plant oil, combine those together in the refinery to get biodiesel. And in total, if we're going to make the infinite storage disk, we only need the one advanced housing. Uh, so we're going to need 4,000 millibuckets of biodiesel, uh, but that shouldn't be too difficult to do. Chat is asking that I put the, uh, the pink armor in the uh, cosmetic slot. And you know what? Just for today's stream chat, we can, uh, we can look a little bit more colorful. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the way that armor looks. It's incredible. So let's have a look. That's the refinery. If we go back, the squeezer and the fermenter are both also on this list. And again, they're made of mostly the same stuff. We've got more light engineering blocks, uh, more iron sheet metal, more redstone engineering blocks, more steel scaffolding. Uh, that all seems pretty standard. So iron sheet metal, I think might be made with iron plates. It is, yeah. Uh, we don't have any iron plates. However, we do have plenty of iron and the ability to make plates. We'll make quite a few of those just in case. Um, in terms of the light engineering blocks, for these, we need iron sheet metal along with the iron mechanical, uh, iron mechanical components and copper. The iron mechanical components uh, can be made in the crafting table, but they can also be made in the engineer's workbench with the engineer's blueprint, which is, I believe, something uh, that we did previously. Yep, we have that ready to go. So once we grab some of our iron plates we should be able to put them in over here and then from there we can throw in a bit of copper like so 
Uh, take out the, oh, this is the wrong press there. That's my bad. Blueprint. Uh, we want the crafting components blueprint, not the mold blueprint. There we go. Uh, from there, we can make cheaper iron mechanical components. The steel scaffolding is something we have made before. And it's something that I don't think requires plates. No, just uh, steel rods and steel ingots. Uh, thankfully, this time around, we have uh, a ton of steel, 258,000. So we can go ahead and probably just make a stack of steel rods here and then a stack of steel scaffolding. I don't think we quite need 62, but just having that ready to go is going to be easier than trying to individually craft the exact amount that we need. And then in terms of the redstone engineering block, what do you need? You just need blocks of iron, redstone, and copper. Again, I think we only need three of these. I think it's one per machine. So we'll take three of those. And then the heavy engineering blocks are made with blocks of steel, electrum, and then steel mechanical components, which are made, again, with steel and copper in the uh, engineer's table. This time around, though, the steel does not need to be in plate form. So we can just do one, two, and boom. Again, I think 32 is probably going to be enough there. How are we doing on iron plates? We're doing all right. Let's make some sheet metal. And then let's also look at getting yet more of these iron mechanical components. Um, I think we are going to need more iron mechanical components because I think we're also going to need more light engineering blocks. Uh, let's take a quick look. So fermenter. Uh, light engineering blocks, we need two there. The squeezer needs another two, so that's four. And then the refinery needs two. So we only need six light engineering blocks. We're actually good on that front. Uh, heavy engineering blocks, we need two there. And then we need zero and I assume zero. I actually think we're pretty good to go here, chat. So we'll probably build these up here somewhere. I think we're good on the alloy front. So we can probably once again get rid of the alloy kiln. And then over here, we do have a little combiner slash osmium compressor system that we are actually going to need, I think, going forward, because we do need to get, if we're going to beat the B quest, we are going to have to get refined glowstone right here. And refined glowstone is made in the osmium compressor with glowstone. So what I might do real quick is uh, throw a bit of glowstone uh, into there to start getting some refined glowstone. Uh, we could also put uh, some more osmium in under here to keep that going, uh, and that should get us the refined gluster we need for later on down the line. Um, for now, though, let's see about getting the fermenter and the squeezer down. So we'll start with the fermenter, as it's right here. So for this, we're currently missing four cauldrons and two fluid pipes. So fluid pipes, we make these in sets of eight, so boom. And cauldrons, of course, just regular Minecraft items. We'll take one, two, three, four of those. And then let's see, so the bottom, is steel scaffolding pipes and light engineering block. So it was like light engineering block at the back. We then have steel scaffolding like so with pipes in the middle like that. The next here is then four cauldrons with another light engineering block and a redstone. So one, two, three, four light engineering block over there, redstone engineering block at the front. And then the third and I believe final tier is just four iron sheet metal. One, two, three, four. We can then grab our engineer's hammer. It does tell you in the book here, um, it says the structure is built as shown above and formed by using the engineer's hammer on the central cauldron from the side that has the engineer's block. So it's actually over here. Right click there, which is fine. I was, I was thinking for a second it might be facing the wrong way, but I think it's actually A-OK. -okay. Um, sometimes the machines can be a bit finicky though, so just make sure you know which side you're, uh, you need to right click on. Now let's also get uh, some torches back down here as well. We can now move over to the squeezer. Again, the start is very similar. So we have another one of these with more steel scaffolding and more pipes at the bottom here and here. Level two is again, mostly the same, but this time we need four wooden barrels. These are made with treated wood. And as of right now, apparently we don't have enough treated wood. The good news, though, is that we did save this uh, creosote in this tank here from earlier. Uh, and so we do have 20 buckets worth of creosote here. So what we should be able to do is uh, quickly craft up some oak planks. Also, people were asking in the YouTube comments how I craft an item and we already have some. Uh, because obviously, if you just left click, you take the item out. Uh, you have to hit Control Shift 
left click. So uh, regular left click takes it out. Control shift left click brings up the crafting menu, even if you already have uh, some of those items in your system. Uh, for us though, we want to go ahead and do something like this and like this. From there, we can craft up some more treated wooden planks. And from there, we can hopefully craft up some barrels, although it looks like we are going to have to get at least one or two more batches of creosote here. One, two, three, and four. Beautiful. Uh, we'll put those over here. One, two, three, and four. Again, with another light engineering block and a redstone engineering block, like so. And then the final tier for the squeezer here is three steel fence and one piston so steel fence we can make and a piston we might already have we do indeed beautiful we'll take that and then we can do one two three and you and once you have all that down you can consult the book and again it's on the same side here so we want to be over here with the hammer right click and boom we have a industrial squeezer nice so let's grab two flux points these go on these little bits that point up here and here. Let's make sure both of those are set to the right frequency. Those should both now be receiving power. They are beautiful. And from there, we should now be able to start producing the plant oil and the ethanol. Now, uh, seed-wise, we do have 96 pumpkin seeds. Let's do some quick number crunching here just to see how much we need. So um, we need to get 4,000 millibuckets of biodiesel. And the, the ratio here is that uh, it's one millibucket of plant oil and one millibucket of ethanol makes two millibuckets of biodiesel. So we're going to need 2,000 millibuckets of plant oil and 2,000 millibuckets of ethanol to get 4,000 millibuckets of biodiesel. And each pumpkin seed gets us 40 millibuckets of plant oil. So if we do 2,000 divided by 40, that's 50. So given that we do have more than 50 pumpkin seeds, we should be good to go here. And uh, given that we're not going to need any more or any less than 4,000 millibuckets of biodiesel, that should begin producing plant oil and should slowly but surely produce all 2,000 millibuckets of plant oil that we need. On the fermenter side of things, we're a lot more flexible. Uh, we'll probably go with sugarcane because we do have um, over a thousand sugarcane ready to be used. Um, again, this time we need 2,000 millibuckets. We do get 80 millibuckets per sugarcane, and so we actually only need 25 sugarcane in order to make this work. We'll put 32 in uh, just because it's easier. And yeah, that should be everything for the plant oil and the ethanol. So now what we need to do is actually put together the refinery. So let us go ahead and do that, I guess. Let's look in here, refinery. Uh, we will press pause and preferably cycle there. So this time we need eight steel scaffolding. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. We also need uh, one light and one heavy. So we'll do light and heavy, like so. And then it's just pipes through the middle. Uh, it looks like we are missing one fluid pipe here. Thankfully, the fluid pipe's nice and easy for us to make. Drop that down here. Level two is another light and another heavy with eight sheet metal and one redstone. So another light, another heavy. We need the redstone over here and then eight sheet metal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Beautiful. And then the final tier chat is just even more sheet metal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I think we're good. Let's take a quick peek in here. Uh, this time the structure uh, is made by right clicking the heavy engineering block on the middle layer. So right click this guy right here and boom, we have a refinery. And so now all we should have to do is grab some mechanical pipes from mechanism and we should be able to pump the oils from each of these guys. And I haven't quite built this in the center and we are missing just one mechanical pipe. There we go. Uh, but that should begin to fill this guy up with both plant oil and ethanol. And so now if we grab one last flux point and we put that down right about here, set that to the Gaming on Caffeine Network and we should 
begin to produce the biodiesel, and we should have exactly enough plant oil to make 4,000 millibuckets of biodiesel so that next time we can come back, we can... Actually, we can do this right now, now that I think about it. We might as well do that before we wrap up here. Uh, we can make the advanced housing. Uh, do you have honey in you? You do. Um, if I break and replace this, does that get rid of the honey? It does. Beautiful. Not that that really matters. Uh, there was 8,000 millibuckets of honey in here. Um, over on our bee island, we do have, I think, like 300 million millibuckets of honey. 800 million, almost 900 million millibuckets of honey. So we're actually doing uh, more than fine enough on honey. So losing that, not too big of a deal. And all we need now is three steel plates, three storage housing. In fact, I shouldn't have done it because the three storage housing does require honey. So we are going to have to make those first. And that means I'm going to have to go grab that honey. That's my bad chat. But uh, that should be very doable. Let's take this. So we'll bring that honey over and we'll put it right about here. And uh, we'll once again grab a fluid cable of some description and make sure that's pumping out over into there. From there, to make the three storage housing that we need, we need uh, vibrant glass, redstone, and quartz enriched iron. So quartz enriched iron, redstone, and I don't know if we have the vibrant glass. We do. Beautiful. Uh, is it still vibrant glass for this? It is. Okay, so we need uh, what? Eight vibrant glass, so we should be good. Uh, steel plate wise, we have 53, so we can grab three of those. Uh, let me get rid of some of the stuff here. My inventory is getting a bit full, uh, but let's do the redstone quartz enriched iron and vibrant glass and three storage housing lids so we can once again break and replace this guy like so uh, we can then put in the two vibrant glass the three steel plates and the three storage housing and all that we're missing are the four buckets worth of biodiesel which we should be able to bring on over from the refinery so I actually don't know if I can just right click this out of here. I don't think we can. I think what we're going to have to do is get a tank of some description. We might as well make it a quantum tank because they're so cheap and easy to make. Uh, we can put that right about here. Grab our fluid cable. Make sure that is set to extract. And then one, two, three, and four. Bring those down to the dissolution chamber. One, two, three three and four and chat that should be everything for the advanced storage housing so that is probably where we're going to go ahead and wrap things up for today tomorrow we will come back for what i think might be the final sky bees stream we should hopefully have more than two hundred and forty thousand of each of the resources required to make the singularities so we'll look at making uh, probably a few more quantum compressors as well as a few more ultimate catalysts we'll set up an area uh, to begin exporting all of those with speed and stack upgrades so that we can begin making those as fast as possible uh, we can then hopefully make the creative vending upgrade everything else here is fairly easy for us to make we can request all of these creative storage upgrades now our system knows how to make them so that is going to be fairly easy for us to do uh, once we have the creative vending upgrade then we will look at beginning to make the creative disc this guy right here the infinite storage disc because with this guy what we can do is we can make uh, one 1k storage part and then we have infinite we can then use that to make one 4k and then we have infinite we can make then 16k and we have infinite and we just have to make one of each going down here which should make the process significantly easier giving us infinite storage and at that point i uh, will probably also look at fighting the gaia in the next stream to see if we can't make the everlasting guilty pool uh, and on top of that we'll also look at crafting up things like the creative energy cube and yeah, we might also do a couple of other quests as well, just to finish off uh, any loose ends. It's possible there might be two more streams, depending on how much stuff we get done tomorrow. Uh, but we are very close to the end of the Skybees mod pack. For now, though, guys, thank you for watching.